Oh, good morning from my side. This morning I want to speak to you about truth. Now I know we've had a similar message on truth already, but this morning I really want to take you in the, so that everyone can understand that, that there's more than truth than just telling the truth sometimes. It is a lifestyle. But before we do, let us pray. Father, I come before you humbly this morning. I remember when Jesus Christ was on trial before Pilate, that even Pilate stood and says, and ask, what is truth? Father, we know that according to the word that Jesus says, I am the truth, the way, and life. And this morning I'm coming to you and I say, Father God, I can only try to convey this message. But you, by your Holy Spirit, need to help me, to assist me this morning. And I thank you that you will do that. I honor you for your love and your grace, and I vow to give you, and you alone, all the glory. Amen. Well, the scripture that I want to start off with is John 8.32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And then John 17.17. 17, Sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is truth. So with all the glory and power God is pouring out right now, you would think that every believer on earth would be happy. You would think every one of us would be healed and delivered and shouting God's praises all day long. You would think that we'd be all free of every bondage of the devil. But quite frankly, many believers are more frustrated today than they've ever been in their lives. God's miracle working power is falling around us like rain. Yet no matter where we go, we can't seem to get wet. We can't seem to, to tap in into that glory. These baffled believers then go from one meeting to another, to another, to a next meeting, hoping God will heal them of sickness or free them from some habit of sin that has ensnared them. When they get to the service, they shout and holler and praise God. They run up and down the aisle and have a good time. They fall on the floor under the power of God. Yet as wonderful as, as all of these things are, by the time they get home, they are hurting again. So they sadly say, well, I guess it didn't get anything tonight either. Or maybe the famous one. What about faith? Maybe, maybe your faith wasn't enough. Although the word is very clear that we only need faith like mustard seed. You don't need faith to believe in God. And please understand me now. God says without faith it is impossible to please Him. But, but to believe that, that God is, I don't really need faith. Look at these paintings. You don't even need to be a scholar to believe that the one was painted by Rembrandt and the other by Van Gogh. Do you need faith to believe that there was a man like Rembrandt or Van Gogh? The fact that you see their works speak for itself. So why do you need faith to see God in this beautiful picture? Don't you see His handiwork? Don't you hear, when you look at this, don't you hear the song that says, O oh Lord my God, when I am awesome wonder, consider all the works thy hand has made. It is so easy. I don't need we, 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 we receive intimate knowledge of God, and not only through its word, but only, also through, through nature around us. You don't need faith to believe that there is a God. You only need faith when you want something from Him. When you come to Him, and you know what? The Bible is very clear. In Hebrews 11 verse 6, it says, They that come to God, Firstly, must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that seek Him. So if you've been walking around thinking, I just understand it. In times past, anybody could pray for me and I would get healed. But now even the most anointed ministers can pray for me and nothing happens. I want you to know something. God is not neglecting you. He's not ignoring your need. He's telling you it's time to grow up. Don't cry over this. It's good news. God is letting you know that you are mature enough in Him that you don't need baby food anymore. 
You don't need anyone to feed you your healing and your deliverance. You don't have to run around from one meeting to another trying to get in on a miracle. You're supposed to have grown to the point where He expects you to pick up your Bible and get what you need by faith now. Hebrews 5.11 Of whom we have many things to say and had to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. For when, for, sorry, for when, for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and has become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses, useth milk is unskillful in the world, word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of full age, even those who by reason of use have the senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And Paul doesn't stop there. If you continue to read and go on to Hebrews 6 now, you will be shocked at what he sees as the basics of our faith. Go, go read that. And you will say, what if I missed? Many times we grow up in body but spiritually, we are dwarfs. We, we, are, we, are, we, we haven't grown. Our, our grown, growth has been impaired spiritually. So I encourage you to go read Hebrews 6 as well. You're not alone either. There are many other believers who have reached the same stage of spiritual growth. From now on, if they're going to walk in freedom from sickness, sin, disease, poverty, and all the rest of the devil's junk, they will have to get it from the Word. Jesus is saying to them, as he has said to me and to everyone else, uh, uh, John 8.32, You shall know the truth, and the tr truth shall make you fr free. But do you know the truth? Do you know the word of God? What's more, it is the only thing that will make you free. There is no alternative, no substitute. And this is a problem. We look for substitutes and alternatives in every area of life. Different faiths, different belief systems. And God is standing and says, what are you doing? Like many men, I sometimes do open the, the refrigerator and tell my wife, I don't find X, Y, Z. And she said, must it call out to you? And sometimes you understand, this is, this is what, the way that we act in spirit as well. We want everything to be done for us. Where did we go wrong then? I want you to take you back to our childhood already. And I want to tell you that, that this is a problem, a real problem. Do you remember the Looney Tunes where Bugs Bunny always checked his map when he went the wrong way and he says, and I can't uh, even try to imitate him, uh, that's Mel's, uh, Mel Brooks' uh, speciality. I knew I should have taken that left turn at Albuquerque. It is about time that we get honest with ourselves and check our spiritual maps. The Bible. The only one. The real one. Now I'm going to ruffle some feathers. And frankly, I don't care. I'm not impressed by you and I'm not trying to impress you. I need to bring you the truth. I'd rather let you be angry with me this side of eternity than accusing me of lying when we stand together on the judgment day. It is wrong and it is sin to be politically correct because lying is a sin according to the word of God and the system has been de designed and planned over ages. Do you really think that we woke up one morning and everything needs to, needed to be politically correct from that moment on? No, it started. It has been planned for ages and ages whether you believe it or not. Whether you call me a conspiracy a theorist or not, I don't care. The fact is, there's a truth. The people looking for to, towards UFOs and all those things, they normally say the truth is out there. Well, I want to tell you, the truth is right in your Bible. And sin is sin. No matter what you call it, sin is sin. A devil, a Satan, the Satan, the devil, don't, 
knock on your front door, all red, with a red face, with a, a horns and an arrow for a tail and a big pitchfork and tells you he wants you to go to hell. He comes disguised, the Bible, our spiritual map warns us, pretending to be an angel of light. The, the problem was and is that we, even as parents, trusted by our kids, helped spread the lie of the enemy to them and we helped to corrupt them. But, but now you're going to fall. It's only kid stuff. Are there a difference when you put your finger in an electric socket or a child does it? Is it child stuff because he does it? The end result is the same. And this is what you must understand. The enemy plays for keep. He's got an end result in mind. He doesn't care about your day-to-day -day living because he doesn't need to and he cannot supply any of your needs. Let me show you an example. And now, and now you need to fasten your seatbelt. Because this portion makes many, that many people just rebel and say, I don't believe this. This is taking it too far. This man is some kind of a fatalist or a fundamentalist. Wait. We were handed and even taught the lies ourselves as kids. Bear with me for a moment. The biggest mistake we make is to think that the enemy is stupid. If we could fought him in our own strength, my Jesus wouldn't have to die. But he knew, and he came, and he overcame, and he won. So listen now and understand how these things work. Instead of instilling into your child the, the, the truth of the birth of Jesus, we teach him the lie of Christmas, which we have now even uh, become the political correct way and changed it to Xmas, taking Christ completely out, even of the lie. Instead of teaching them the truth of Passover, we teach them about hot cross buns, bunnies and Easter eggs. The list goes on. But here is the real danger, and the enemy knows this. There will come a time and a moment in your child's life when you will have to, child, to tell your child, my son, my daughter, this was only a story. And then he sits and he looks at you because he trusts you. He's supposed to trust you. My dad, my mom loves me. They will never lie to me. And now they tell me that Father Christmas and the Easter Bunny and the Tooth Fairy and the list goes on isn't true. So if it's not true, it's a lie. It's a fantasy. And the youngsters do not see it as such. To them the disappointment is not as much that there isn't a real Santa, a tooth fairy or Easter bunny, but that their parents who they trusted implicitly lied to them. You must understand when you go to a court of law, we know about hearsay witness, that I cannot say something that I heard you say. That won't be uh, allowed in court as, as evidence. But there's also something else what happens. Whenever you come to, to and, and especially with the police, that was uh, because we, uh, when I was still in the police, uh, we used to go to court very often. Uh, with, with somebody going to court once in his lifetime, it's, it's not that much, although the same tests apply. But there is a test for every witness, and, and that is the job of the judge, to see whether this person is a credible witness. In Afrikaans het ons het genoem, a geloofwaardige getuie. Can I glow what you say? Can I really believe what you are saying? Can I, can I take it to the bank? And, and this is the thing, once a police officer, and, and I'm using this example now because, as I say, they go to court much more than the normal person. Once that police officer were caught out lying, he loses his credibility immediately. And every time after that, that you go to court, even, even uh, uh, when you are telling the truth, everything you are saying, 
are still judged very critically because you have lost your credibility. And this is exactly what is the big deal with telling all these things to your kids. You have lost your credibility with your kids. And you have even made it look fun. Hmm. What else have you taught them? Being the good parent that you are. Remember the nights around the children's Bible? Telling them about Jesus. Telling them about God the Father. That loves them so much. Why will they believe that story now? All your life lessons have just gone through the, uh, through the, down the drain, through the window, through the door, whatever you want to call it. And they will now decide that they will have to try things for themselves. I don't know how much of that which dad or mom told me was just a lie. Another fantasy. Who says, I mean, talking about a man walking on water. Hmm. A man that, that, that go to a cross willingly. Hmm. A man that died, but he rose again. Shh. Do you understand where the criticism comes from? Do you understand what you have done to their foundation? Because when, 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 they, when they are discouraged in their appearance, you have, shook, you have shook their foundation in life. And now they go and they, and they want to try all these things because there is no certain fixed faith. Next they ask their friends or the teacher in an ungodly system. They listen to songs and they watch movies every day, program, program to make parents and every authority figure out as monsters. So they say, I'm not alone in this. Look at this movie. That mom and that dad. The child are not allowed to do anything. On the, around every corner there's a policeman chasing the kids away. And they rebel against all authority. And where does authority come from? In the end they rebel against God. They say things that they should have never said. I want to ask you this morning. Stick to the truth. Call a spade a spade. Do not try to be accepted by the world. Don't be part of the lie. The world believes in the saying, in for a penny, in for a pound. And they will force you to go all the way. Once you start laughing, once you start uh, laughing for their jokes, once you start uh, doing the small things with them, they will expect you to go all the way. Don't fall for the old, but everyone is doing it. No. We are different. We are set apart. We are a peculiar people. We are supposed to be different. We are supposed to be not confirmed to this world. Check your spiritual map today. Investigate things and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. He's the spirit of truth. Don't accept things on face value, even if it is your pastor. Check the word. Does the teaching line up or does it contradict the word of God? And do something about it. You are responsible. When the Bible says that we need to work out our own salvation, it doesn't mean that we can believe what we want. But he says it means that we are responsible for what we do with the Word of God and the Word of God in our life. We all know the story and I'm not going to tell that. I'm going to end up with that song this morning about Daniel. When everyone looked at Daniel and says, just do it, man. Just bow. Why, why, what's the problem? Daniel says, I cannot. I cannot betray my God. But you're in a strange country. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Nobody will know. I'm sorry. My God knows. My God sees. I want to encourage you this morning. The time is here. Now. Where we as a church of God need to rise and, 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 and we need to be accounted for. We need to, to, to strengthen and ask God to strengthen our weak arms and knees and, and back. And that we need to stand up again and say, Lord, I've chosen you. It's an old song and I'm going to play this at the end. Be 
like a Daniel. Dare to be a Daniel, even if you stand alone. Let us pray. Father, thank you. Lord, a teaching like this morning, people do not like to hear that. No parent wants to know, where have I failed? Father, so many parents over the years have said, I brought my child up in a good Christian home. We've sent him to Sunday school. We've done all, we've done all this stuff that normal good parents do. So what has happened to my child? But we do not understand that that in all of the things that we, we did, Father, if you bake a cake and there's a, a recipe for that cake, you cannot just add something else because you like it, because then the recipe has changed. We have changed your recipe. Father, that doesn't mean that, that we can't have any fun. But Lord, I don't need Santa Claus or a tooth fairy or an Easter bunny or any other lie to make it fun. We can still have fun. We can, Lord, my children uh, uh, st uh, have still enjoyed eating the nice chocolate eggs. But that was all it ever was, chocolate eggs. There was never a thing about an Easter egg and an Easter bunny and, and all the lies that went with it. We too enjoy getting presents. But because of your grace, because of your love, because of the price that Jesus paid on Calvary, We've got a, the privilege to be a gift to one another every day of our lives. And Father, this morning I ask that you will let every parent, especially those with young, young babies and kids, they will look at that young one and say, I'm going to show you the way. Son, daughter, you can follow mommy or daddy. It will always lead you to Christ. I thank you now. Father, I will be the very first one that says it is only and only by the grace of God that we can do this. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. Dare to be a Daniel. God bless you. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us?